I think one of the best wood fills is a mixture of very fine sawdust and epoxy. And sometimes I'll use five minute epoxy, sometimes I'll use West System epoxy. It really depends on the project and how much epoxy I'm mixing up. So when I was sanding this wall in that chair, I put down a piece of cardboard. And I often do that when I'm sanding a project for two reasons. Uh, you don't scratch the wood when you're sanding on top of the cardboard. And two, all of this fine sawdust can be then scraped into a nice neat pile and collect it onto a piece of paper. And in this case, I'll store it in a water bottle, but you can store it in a jar, or really whatever you have, a cup. And then you can use it when you need to mix up some wood fill. I've made a putty knife with the bandsaw and I'll use this to mix the sawdust into the epoxy. I want a very thick mixture so I'll add a little more sawdust. Generally I would try to work around this knot, but for the purpose of the video I'll fill it with the sawdust and epoxy mixture. When I applied the sawdust and epoxy, I domed the fill up a little bit so I could sand it level with the board. And even though I'm using five minute epoxy, I usually will let it dry for about 20 to 30 minutes uh, and really let it cure, otherwise it tends to gum up the sandpaper. Well, I think that looks pretty good. Uh, I mean, obviously, if I was building a top to something, I wouldn't use a board with a huge knot hole like that. Uh, but the point here is that not only does the sawdust and epoxy work as a good filler, but you can also use it to bind boards together. So I've often used it where uh, a board has a check in it and I'll fill the check and then clamp the board together and then you can sand the epoxy and sawdust mixture flush and it fills the void, but it also helps to hold everything together. So it's just a very good fill and, I, and it also can be used, uh, you can shape it. So if you have a, an imperfection on a corner of a, a piece, you can fill it and use some tape to um, guide that fill and then sand it flush and it will stay strong, not like a, an actual wood fill, which is really kind of brittle. So uh, one other thing, I'm looking at this and it looks a little bit light to me. Now, if I were to actually fill uh, an imperfection in a walnut piece of furniture, I would probably take a piece of charcoal, artist charcoal, and rub it on a piece of sandpaper and get some of that charcoal sawdust, and, or not sawdust, charcoal dust, and add it to the sawdust, and then mix that up so it was darker. Because if you think about uh, imperfections in wood, they're generally darker than the wood itself. And the untrained eye won't see it as uh, wood fill, they'll see it as an imperfection in the wood. So if you think of cherry, you've seen dark marks in cherry, you've seen dark marks in um, mahogany or walnut, even white oak. Uh, I think that that is definitely the way to go. Always go darker is a good rule of thumb when you're thinking about your wood fill. And the only uh, time where that might not apply is with maple. Often when I fill maple, if I have an imperfection or a nail hole, I'll use plastic wood and that seems to work great. I've been using it for years and I always use the natural color. It just says natural on it. Anyway, I hope you found the video useful. Thanks for tuning in.